Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Josh. <laughs> Feels weird. I don't like this. So every chef knows there are unbreakable rules in the kitchen. You always preheat your oven, you always salt your pasta water, you never eat Doritos before 8 a.m. But what happens when you actually break these rules? Do the food gods rain fiery vengeance upon you and your family, dooming your souffles to not rise for years to come? Or are these just arbitrary myths peddled from chef to chef over the years just waiting to be busted? To find out, I've assembled a team of serious culinary professionals to put these to the test. This is Myth Munchers. Were we gonna say that together? Yeah, yeah, on three. One, two, three. This, this no wait, sorry, sorry, no, I go this is and then And then we come in yeah. on myth. Okay. This, this is Myth Munchers. That was good. Trevor Nicole. Today we're dealing with some Thanksgiving turkey myths, right? But we have to keep the main objective in mind, which is how to make turkey taste good. Specifically, we wanna see what makes the juiciest turkey. And there's a lot of myths floating around out there. The main one is basting. We have three turkeys because we only have three ovens in the building and we wanna test them all side by side. Next page. First one is brining. So brining is the process of covering it in salt. You can either do a dry brine or a wet brine and that will bring moisture inside the turkey, but we also need a control that is not brined to see if that makes it juicy or not. Now the second myth revolving turkey juiciness. This was uh, this was a personal note, never mind. Now the second myth revolving turkey juiciness is basting. So that means you're taking either the turkey juices or an outside fat, and you are literally covering the skin in periodic intervals, typically 30 minutes throughout the cooking process. People say it locks the juices in. I'm not so convinced. So we're taking the wet brine, the dry brine, the control, and we are going to be basting half of the turkeys in the oven. My thought is that basting is really only a skin deep process. So we can create an even divide along those turkeys to really test out the process, see what combination yields the juiciest turkey. Assignments, what are we doing? I'm a dry briner. I've been doing that my whole turkey roasting career. I've been roasting my family's turkeys since I was 12 years old. I think I wanna do that. Nicole, are you cool with wet brining? Sure. All right, <laughs> Trevor, you have arguably the most important job here. You need to create the control turkey, neither wet nor dry brine, just salted, roasted, it needs to be perfect. Do you have any problems with that? Is it gonna be a problem if I've never cooked a turkey before? You've never cooked a turkey before. <laughs> now my family always did try to on Thanksgiving. You're about to learn something today, baby. Let's do this. Oh, I'm glad I took notes. <laughs> All right, Nicole, tell me what we got going on here. I need that. Uh, we're gonna start wet brining real quick. So I got hot water. Um, it's coming up to temp pretty soon. So I'm gonna take two cups of salt. Okay. And then three cups of sugar. And then I'm going to let that completely dissolve. Great, and so we're just keeping it consistent. We're gonna do yeah. the dry brine and the wet brine just with salt and sugar. And what the salt's gonna do, the process behind wet brining is you're soaking the turkey in a salt solution. The salt is actually creating a reverse osmotic relationship and exactly. drawing the salt into the turkey flesh. Exactly. Like Osmosis Jones. Just like Osmosis Jones, fantastic movie. Great movie. So the only way to actually get your turkey meat seasoned throughout is to brine it, right? I like to think that brining is an actual legit process. I do too, yeah. I brine a lot of meats, anything that I want seasoned, and to me it does make meat juicier as well, but the difference between dry brining and wet brining, for me, I think the wet brine is gonna create too much moisture inside the bird and that's gonna steam the skin and not get it crispy, and mm. I think you're actually gonna lose moisture doing this. Interesting. Just my theory. This looks like it's pretty much dissolved, so I'm gonna quickly bring the temperature down because I do not have that much time I to I notice you have a bunch of ice here. All of this hot water is about to come down to like basically almost room temp, maybe a little bit less, so we don't have to wait for it to, you know, come down to room temp. We're just gonna do it ourselves. Do you want help? No, not yet was not prepared to help. Right, so this is just cooling the brine down because like you need your turkey to stay cold because you're gonna let this <laughs> Uh oh. You need your turkey to stay cold because obviously this is gonna sit for two days. What yeah. we decide on. But 48 hour brine with such a big bird to me is really good. If you're brining something like a chicken breast, you can do it over the course of like six hours or so. Okay, hold on. One, okay, two, okay. three. Don't splash. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Someone ate Taco Bell yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna like maybe flip it over so the breast side is down so it actually weighs it down and it's like a flat surface, you see? Oh, that's, that's good. That's pretty good. You just need to make sure the whole thing's covered. That's good. <laughs> that's good. So I think we should cover this up and let it go for right. about 48 hours. All right, ladies and gents, we have Josh Scherer here. Tell, uh, tell us what we're gonna do, Joshy. Yeah, so the first half, you know, we really came out and we executed our game plan. We just gotta trust the process. Our defense has been holding us up. Is that touch raw turkey? Oh my, it's wet. I it's sanitized wet. it. I need this, give it to me. All right, we're gonna be dry brining this turkey. Again, we're going simple. We're just doing a whole lot of kosher salt. And like, you can measure it out, but it's all dependent on the size of your actual turkey. And we got these big old honks and bucks and cleavage having turkeys. What's your ratio? So I go two to one salt to sugar. When I'm wet brining, I will do a little bit more sugar to salt. I really want the salt to like sit on the skin of the turkey and dry out all that moisture. And again, when you're wet brining, you don't necessarily have to rinse off the bird, but when you're dry brining, it's something that I always do. So like, mm -hmm. just cake the whole thing in salt and just a little bit of sugar. Do you 
wrap it? I don't wrap it because I, I want that skin to just kind of like lose moisture. And when, every time you're wrapping something, you're, you're just... keeping the moisture in. Exactly, okay, exactly. Cool, cool, cool. Get it inside the wings. And you also want to get some inside that cavity. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited for you. Never flip! Trevor, are you still, still taking notes? Yeah, I'm getting all this. Okay, good. Make sure you're learning something good, Trevor. Yes, chef. And rub it along the sides. You really want to kind of like massage it in there. You don't actually have to. It's just going to sit on top. It's going to draw out all that moisture. And I'm going to give it one more flip. Ugh. Oh, it's yeah, juicy you can already. already see. <laughs> See the juices start it's to flow in. Quite juicy. It's really good. I'm just gonna kind of pack salt around. That's just gonna absorb all those juices. So, Nicole, you got your wet brine turkey in the fridge. Trevor, you're learning as much as you can, prepping for the day of. I got this dry brine turkey sitting in the salt. We need to let this sit for 48 hours, and we're gonna come back, we're gonna roast them, and we're gonna test them to see which of these turkey juiciness myths actually hold up. I can't wait. All right, so we got the three turkeys out of the oven. We got the wet brine. You see a little bit of color difference. <laughs> you said oven. <laughs> Silly man. You do the show. I'm leaving. So I we got three place. ovens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got our three turkeys out of the fridge. We had the wet brine that's been going for 48 hours. You see like a little bit of discoloration. There's been a little bit of yellowing from the salt. Then we got our dry brine, which you see that skin looks super, super dry. And that's one of the reasons I love this method is because it's gonna create extra crispy skin. And then Trevor, to honor your big old dump truck juicer, we got you a big old dump truck juicer turkey. His name is Jedediah. No that's way. fantastic. Never name your turkey, you'll get emotionally attached. So the next step here is we brined it with the gizzards in. Doesn't matter if you do it with or without, but now we gotta remove them before we bake. Here, grab a bowl. Grab I'd a bowl. rather not do that. I'll do yours, Nicole. You do yours as well. So you're just gonna reach in. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, Should've died, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh what is that? What, what is do you that? think this is? Is it the panas? <laughs> no. That is actually the turkey neck. This is great for making stock and stuff. And then we gotta reach in. You gotta find the kidneys. Hold on, I can do it two hands at once. You gotta close your eyes. Yeah, yeah there we go. There's another neck. What? How'd you find oh, three God. necks? Yours had two necks in there? Yeah, yeah, sometimes turkey's got two necks. I don't believe that to no be true. Way. Yeah, yeah. And then, hold on. I'm feeling for the kidneys. Did we get an extra neck? Yeah. yeah Is that a sign yeah, of good luck? The kidneys. I popped one. Now we actually have to figure out how we're going to divide these turkeys in half so we know we're only basting one half of the turkey. Because that is what this experiment all boils down to, right? If we can get half the turkey basted and half not. Yes, pass Nicole. Uh, why don't we use kitchen twine? Wow, what do you mean? Did you forget um, to get kitchen twine? I think you just forgot. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't, we don't have, well, we don't, well, we, we don't make a lot of roasts in here. You don't need kitchen twine to make a crunch wrap. So but what we do have, <laughs> painter's tape. Oh. oh. You can bake with painter's tape, right? Like in a restaurant, you like put tape on, you know, like a, a baking dish and put it in the oven to label uh, it. Yes, okay. Something like painter's tape. What we could also do is we could stuff toothpicks across the breastplate, and then make it like a Hellraiser turkey. Awesome! <laughs> yeah, I think we should do that. I was also thinking we could use food dye Can to I? sort of just paint a line. Yeah, I, I like art. I could paint. I think painter's tape's the way to go. Let's do Can it. Can you do bake it. painter's tape? Does anyone know what it's made out of? Glue. What, like edible glue? I think Trevor's method is probably the best. I think we just create a clean line, something edible, something that we can really see the color difference. I'm worried about the painter's tape turning into straight poison uh, and killing us. We don't want that. Looks like a girl I fell in love with at a punk show back in 98. I was six. I think we should just paint. So the reason that the food dye is gonna stick to the turkey is because we have dried these off. So the dry brine, all we did, we like rinsed it in water and then we dried it with paper towels. Wet brine, all you gotta do is dry it with paper towels. Always dry your meats with paper towels when you're gonna throw them in an oven because that way you can get crisp your skin. So now we have to actually throw this in the oven. Nicole, I got you in the bottom oven. I'm taller than you. I'm taking the top oven. Where am I going? Cool. We got a third oven. No, come on, man. Hey, go to the old kitchen. Go come old on, kitchen. for old time's sake. Come on. Hi. See you, buddy. Sorry. Thanks, Trevor. Hey. What's up? You can't do this, can you? No, I got tight quads. We got the turkeys loosely tented. The foil isn't touching the flesh of the turkey. We especially don't want that because uh, our turkeys are covered in food dye, which I'm not gonna BS you. I am worried it's gonna bleed and turn our turkeys green, the color of the hot squirts after you eat that Burger King yeah. Halloween burger. Yeah, you know that from experience. But you do, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. One, two, go. And then we have to coordinate putting in our turkeys. On three, one, two, go. Are you in, are you in, are you in? I'm in, I'm in. And then we're gonna close the ovens. On three, one, two, go. Woo! That was easy. Don't touch me. Why? What? Why? I don't, I don't like to be touched. I didn't grow up in a warm family. I'm sorry. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Josh. <laughs> Feels weird. I don't like this. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let these roast for an hour while it's tented. That's gonna get the juices flowing. Cool. We're gonna add our melted butter. We're gonna use our turkey basters. You go squirt it on half the turkey. Okay, cool. It's a plan. We got it. What's Trevor doing? Me, Trevor. I'm in the lame kitchen, but it's now the cool kitchen because I'm here and uh, I'm all alone. 
it's kind of sad. I bet Josh and Nicole are probably having a lot of fun, like holding hands or dancing or something. I don't know. But I got this turkey, and I guess I just gotta pop in the oven. I'm not a big fan of turkey. I think it's a pretty uh, forgettable meat, forgettable poultry, but it's my job. And I'm gonna do it because I'm a man of science. Oh! I guess we just wait for an hour. We got the turkeys in the oven. They've been in there for an hour. We have them tented, so the juices should be flowing. Nicole, I'm gonna go on three ovens open, then we're gonna open the ovens, and then we're immediately going to lift up the foil and pour in the butter. One, two, go. Remove the tent on three. One, two, go. Okay, add the butter. One, two, go. And remember, we're only basting the left side of the bird, okay? Okay. Only half of it. Okay. There we go. Do not let it come over the lip of that food dye, which is actually held together. Our turkeys are not crazy. green. How oh, we can actually we... remove the foil. We're not using foil anymore. Okay, okay. <laughs> it was kind of helping me as like a low key barrier. Yeah, make sure the butter is mixing in with the turkey juices. How many times are we gonna baste today? Four. We're gonna baste four times. Four, I'm on base number three. Okay, this is my last base. Okay, okay, we're done, we're done. Oven's closed on three. One, two, three, Go. close. Beautiful. Okay, so the turkey's been roasting for about an hour. I believe it's time to baste. I was taking notes, but really, I just drew a hand turkey with a soul patch. Open up the oven, take this butter, and just give it a pour. Not over the turkey, I'm just pouring it into the bottom. All right, so the butter's in the pan, and now I believe that that is the whole of ah! I believe it's as simple as just sticking this in, squeezing, getting it in the baster, and then do I just like pour? Yeah, it looks good to me. I think that's what I do. Josh and Nicole never told me how to do this. I think I'm gonna let this show off for another 30 minutes and then back to base some more. Nicole, now we have to do a very important step. We gotta stop playing with the wing tips. We have to put foil tips on our wings to prevent them from burning. Don't touch me, I don't know. we've touched too much today. Okay, on three, we're gonna open the oven and insert the wing tips. Are you ready? One, two, go. Insert the wing tips. One, hold on, two, hold on. go, 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 go! Shut up. I crushed mine, sorry. Yeah. I can't see, I can't see, I can't see! <laughs> I'm blind, Nick, you gotta cut me! Georgia, I can't see, I can't <laughs> see, am I doing it? Yeah, you got it, you got it, you got it. All right, now close it, now close it, we'll just reset, okay? And then we're gonna go back to basting. So this is the second base, right? So we're going for like three base. Typically people say 20 minutes per pound of turkey. That is what we're gonna go for or until the internal temperature reads 155 degrees. You ready to baste again? Yes! On three, one, two, go. Don't hit me in the Six face. Six base, Six base. Okay. It's not a good sign of a workplace when you have to tell your boss, don't hit you in the face. Do you see any color? Oh, I burned myself! Nicole! <laughs> Medic! Do you see any difference yet between the brine and non-brine? Not really, but I have a feeling that it's gonna really start to make a difference like towards like maybe the like fifth base. I think so, because the butter fat like should start to actually brown on the skin a little bit more. No, totally. I'm on my last base. I'm gonna be done in three seconds. In three, two, one, close the ovens. Woo! Do you want me to help you up? Psych. <laughs> All right, y'all, so we basted the turkeys every half hour for about two and a half hours. Uh, Trevor yours was a little bit bigger, but we pulled these all at exactly 155 degrees internally. And then we're just having them tented now for the big dramatic reveal. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Are you yes. ready, kids? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, Captain. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's turkey, turkey time. time. Oh, my God, they're birds. Wow. 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 Okay. So okay, huh? pretty. Trevor's turkey is objectively the prettiest. It got the most even browning on it. You can see it's a little bit bigger, and you can Beautiful. see where he basted it on this side. It's definitely darker. For sure. Yeah, look at the drumstick to drumstick difference here. The skin does look a little bit wetter. We don't know what that's actually done to the meat on the inside, but like, to me, the darker parts are more appealing. Yeah, yeah it right? looks like 100%. a beautiful bird. All right, so let's look at the dry brine one. The dry brine one, that's where the skin was really sort of like desiccated, super dry. I think it looks pretty crispy and rendered compared to that. This one, definitely a lot plumper. Like when you dry brine, you get a lot of moisture loss. We're definitely seeing that. Mm -hmm. Similar on the basting where we got extra browning and it's kind of patchy. But I don't know. I mean, this one does look better. But the skin does look a lot crispier. Yeah. And to me, that is the benefit of dry brining. Yeah, ugly. wet bird. <laughs> My wet bird ugly. The most fascinating part about the wet brine to me is that since the meat absorbs so much moisture, it actually bled out of the skin and caused our food dye to run. Yeah. Uh, but also it looked like it did prevent the skin from getting crispy. Yeah, just really uneven looking. And we had the same oven placement, same temperature, yeah. 350 all the way through. Same, same. That's actually really shocking because I didn't know that. It does look like so much wetter, like on the parts where there's not a lot of browning, like the meat looks really moist. All right, so now all we gotta do is carve into these and then actually take them and see what our methods did. 
All right, y'all, we got all the turkey breasts carved off. So we have no brine base, no brine, no base, dry brine base, dry brine, no base, wet brine base, wet brine, no braced. <laughs> no braced, no braced, <laughs> no. All right, let's try these. Trevor, cut us off a piece. Oh! Yeah, give me that, give me that. Oh, cake. that sounded you delicious. Want... I'll There's take this. It. Okay, so again, this is no base, no brine, no nothing. This is straight just bird in the oven. Bird in the oven. One, two, three. That's not enjoyable at all. I don't like it. It's not like the driest turkey I've ever had. I mean, it's still like pretty well roasted. We pulled it at the right temp. I'm not getting anything fun out of it. No, I would. Nothing interesting. This is so plain. No. Okay, okay. We're going here. It looks wetter. It looks beautiful. Like I see wet underneath. Yeah. Also, can we just say that our stupid plan worked to base half a turkey? It did. I was quite impressed. <laughs> I'm too. very, very proud of all of us. Trevor's gotten better at cutting in the last two minutes. I love this. He's <laughs> learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm committed. Open wide, big I'm boy. Committed. All right, on three, one, two, go. Oh, mm -hmm. oh that is so moist. That's oh so much God. juicier. That's mm. the same wait, bird? Wait, wait. Wow. That's a whole nother bird. That's Hold the f <laughs> Did not think it was gonna happen. Same bird, same temperature, everything. That one was basted. It is 10 times juicier. That's you unbelievable. You can see the difference. Wow. You can squeeze juice out of this one, like. It's delicious. I'm willing to say that basting freaking works, but without that, it's not the juiciest turkey I've ever had, and it's not seasoned all throughout. So I'm still curious about the primes. Yeah. Let's see. Skin, super, super crisp. Okay. Well, everyone just reach in and grab a piece. Okay. On three, one, two, go. Oh. Tastes much better. Tastes much better, super dry. Tastes really good. The skin is almost tough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like it's crispy, but not in a good almost way. Almost like it's like snappy. Do you guys it's taste like, that snappiness of like the meat? It's like I'm chewing through like the peel of something. <laughs> like clench your teeth together and then separate it. It like almost like mm -hmm. gums in the back of your teeth, which is really, really weird. That's the brine. It's like, I was talking about the difference between eating like a brisket and corned beef is that sappiness. Yeah, That's yeah, all the salt sure. soaking in there. Okay. Okay. Clean. Okay. Pretty okay. clean. Color me completely shocked that basting does seem to yield much better results all across yeah, the board. Yeah, and you were a basting hater. Yeah. I was a basting hater You're the an whole time. You are an just going in? Those yeah, yeah. big pieces. Oh, okay, you're kind of going. What the heck, man? Bro. Yeah, that's good bird meat. Well oh, seasoned yeah. all throughout. Hell just juices really well. Mm. Basting, what the heck? It's so like so eating two completely different birds. Unbelievable. Okay, let's see what's up with the wet Ooh, brine. Basting. I don't know, guys. This one looks a little dry, surprisingly. It looked a little bit dry when you're cutting it, but like, if you touch your lips, it's wet. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. mm. That was kind of really yummy. I think the flavor on that one wow. might be the best so far. You want to know what it is? It's the salt sugar ratio. That's what makes it so delicious. Do you think maybe you just put more love into it? Well, I put a lot of love in everything I do, so maybe. It is really wild to think about the difference in texture between the no brine, the dry brine, and the wet brine. It is, they're yeah. like completely different animals, oh, but yeah. also Same. think about the difference between that and that and what we just tasted, what is that gonna taste like? I know. I, I have I, really high hopes for this one. I have no idea. I don't know if I'm ready. Let me cut you guys some pieces. Blow. My mouth's gonna explode. I want, no, no, I want there. You want there? Okay, I'm, okay, I've okay. been eyeing the little piece of turkey flesh that I want. Can we talk about like how we've achieved like an actual scientific process here? Like the three of us, who would have thought <laughs> Not that I. we could execute the scientific process and get results. We munched the myths. We actually Who did it. I want, the, I want the whole piece. Okay, okay, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor, I cut you baby piece. Ooh, Thank baby you. girl. Okay, ready? Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Come on. Holy crap, guys. It's so good. It's unbelievable. It is literally like a sponge for all the flavor from that brine. And though this had the flavor, the juice really does absorb. I don't mm -hmm. think we care about crispy skin, right? Because we had crispy skins on these two and it, it didn't add anything. It didn't add anything. It's more important for the meat to be juicy and flavorful yeah. and have that beautiful texture more so yeah. than that crispy Because well, there's skin. so much meat to skin in a turkey, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the like ratio, such a yeah. thick chunk of meat and such a small layer of skin. It's not like a chicken where you've got like meat and skin. Yeah. There's so much meat and so it's really important Agreed. that the meat is right. Yes, we actually learned a whole lot today, more than I was even planning on. I mean, the difference between the wet brine basted turkey and I mean, to me, almost all the other ones incomparable how much better that is. If you are cooking a Thanksgiving turkey this year, heck, if you're cooking anything, just a turkey breast, if you're cooking lunch meat turkey, wet brine and baste that because this is so, so much better. I can't believe it. 100%. Sometimes you munch the myth and sometimes that myth munches you. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. Nicole and I got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. Sorry, Trevor, that was awkward now. And uh, hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. See y'all next time. Make your kitchen more mythical with these stickers and magnets. Now available at mythical.com.